You got it. Oh, it's live. It's running. Yep, it's live. At this time, all sergeants, please start recordings. PC recording all set. All rolling. Backup is rolling. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing for the Committee on Consumer Affairs. At this time, would all panelists please turn on the video for verification purposes. And to minimize disruptions, we ask to please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Chair Ayala, we are ready to begin. Good morning, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Diana Ayala and I am the Chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Welcome to our remote vote on proposed introduction number 936A. I would like to recognize my fellow council members, council members Rose, Levin, Rosenthal, Menchaca, Diaz, Ku, Koslowitz, Chen, Dinowitz, Lander, Brennan, and Lander. Intro 936A, sponsored by council member Helen Rosenthal, aims to restrict single-use plastic beverage straws, beverage stirrers, and beverage sti uh, splash sticks. For most people, these items are completely unnecessary and simply a relic of our disposable products culture. With climate change now well upon us, we've had to reckon with behaviors and attitudes, especially when it comes to our reliance on plastics. More than 320 million tons of plastic are consumed each year, and our use of plastic is still expected to double over the next two decades. Even though we tend to use these items only once before disposing of them, Plastics in the environment can take hundreds of years to break down. When they do break down, they leach chemicals back into the environment and smaller shards end up in the waterways and eventually in the ocean. Each year, at least 8 million tons of plastic leaks into the ocean, a figure that is the equivalent of dumping a garbage truck of trash into the ocean every minute. If we don't change our behavior, the World Economic Forum predicts that there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. Plastic straws are a common contributor to this debris. Due to their size and their weight, they often end up in the ocean. Even when recycled, they are too small to be picked up by the machine that, and they don't make it through the process. It's no wonder that they are one of the most common types of garbage found in coastal cleanups. This seemingly banal, uh, banal item has disproportionately negative impacts on the environment, and clearly it is an issue that needs to be addressed. Policies that operate to support the environment should not, however, become the burden of only certain uh, groups of people. That is why I am happy to support the A version of this bill, which includes important provisions to serve the needs of people with disabilities. Since our original hearing on this bill in 2018, we have worked closely with advocates for the disability community, as well as environmental advocates and experts and members of the restaurant and hospitality industry to present a bill today which delicately balances the needs of all. We will join jurisdictions across the world that have recognized the need to reduce the use of single-use plastics and restrict items like plastic straws while accommodating those who need plastic straws for medical reasons. Small businesses in the city are also struggling and any new legislation that creates new requirements subjecting them to fines must be balanced to ensure that businesses will not face burdening, um, burdensome costs and penalties. I am proud of this piece of legislation that we are voting on today. The climate is real and disproportionately impacts, um, the climate crisis is real and disproportionately impacts lower income communities and communities of color. The bill ensures that New Yorkers and our many tourists will no longer be offered a plastic straw at a food service establishment. This will drastically cut down on our use of plastic straws in the city and hopefully inspire city residents to be more conscious of the plastics that we use. As the same, at the same time, individuals with disabilities who need plastic straws will be able to request a plastic straw at food service establishments where staff will be required to supply straws upon request. No questions asked. Self-service stations where customers obtain items like utensils, napkins, and straws will contain signs alerting co um, consumers that if they need a plastic straw, they may request one. This bill will make our city greener without minimizing uh, uh, accessibility for those with disabilities at our food service establishment. And so I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Before I hand it over to Council Member Rosenthal, I wanna make a statement. I would like to thank a former Council Member Rafael Espinal and his team for all of their work on this bill. I would also like to thank committee staff and legislative council, Stephanie Jones, policy analyst, Noah Mixler and uh, Leah, ah, Leah, I'm gonna get it, 
Chris, script ep, 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 Zolia, I'm not gonna get it, I'm sorry. I love you anyway. And finance analyst, Florentine Cabori. Um, I would also like to turn it over to Council Member Rosenthal to deliver her, uh, her statement on the bill. Council Member Rosenthal. Thank you so much, Council Member Ayala. I got nothing. You covered the entirety of the excitement around this bill. What's so wonderful is that um, the staff at the council was able to juggle the needs of three different and very important communities. Those environmentalists who push us so hard and correctly to get plastics out of uh, our lives. Um, the restaurant industry, which is struggling to come back, especially now who we all want to support. And of course, the, um, the disabilities community, those with disabilities who cannot drink uh, something out of a glass and must have a plastic straw now can just ask and um, they'll get a straw, no questions asked. That's such a critical part of this compromise. So I'm really here just for the assist. Uh, Council member Rafael Espinal brought it all the way this far and I'm very proud to have been able to inherit this bill and get it over the finish line. Thank you so much, Chair Ayala. And I appreciate my uh, colleagues voting yes on the bill. Thank you so much. Um, think, uh, we will now call on the clerk to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk. Roll call vote committee on consumer affairs and business licensing. Proposed introduction 936A, Chair Ayala. I would I. Thank you, Chin. I probably vote aye. It took a long time, but we got here. Thank you, Helen. Kalos. I'm proud to vote aye, and I believe we will be leading the nation on this. Good job, Helen, and uh, thank you for Espinal introducing it to begin with. Who? Aye. Kozlowitz. Proud to vote aye. Lander. Aye. Menchaca. Uh, I vote aye. Brennan. I can't use a straw without feeling the guilt of Rafael Espinal, and I am proud to vote aye. Jaeger. No. Dinowitz. Councilmember Dinowitz. Are you muted? You're muted. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sorry, but thank you. <laughs> By vote of nine in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, proposed introduction 936A has been adopted by the committee. And that is a full committee. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Uh, well, with that, this is